Are you watching this because you're trying to learn how to use your three-point hitch on your tractor and need help with the adjustments and what to do to hook up your implements? You came to the right place. Hey guys, Zach here from Kubota Lynchburg, and today I wanted to go over how to use a three-point hitch, what the different parts are of the three-point hitch, and how to do adjustments and what those adjustments are for. So I've recently had a couple conversations with customers on what the different um, cylinders are for, what the different ratchet-style rods are for, and how to use them properly. And until you get into using a tractor and attaching implements, a lot of times right off the bat, there's a lot of stuff back here and you don't know what to do with it or how to use it. So I'm gonna go over some of the basics here and each implement you attach is gonna make things a little different on how you wanna do adjustments. We're gonna go over the basics of how to do it so you know what you're doing and how to properly hook things up and take them off. So first I'm gonna go over all the parts of a three-point hitch. The reason it's called a three-point hitch is because you're gonna to hook to your implements with one, two, three points. Three points to your implement, three-point hitch. Your first point is gonna be what's called your top link. Because this hooks to the top of the implement, you have this top link style going to it. Um, and this is adjustable here that I'll show you in a minute. So you've got an adjustable top link. Your other two points to your link are going to be your lower links. So you've got your lower arms or your lower links right here. Again, linking to the lower side of your implement. I'm just using a weight box for this one. It's very easy, you have your top link pin and your lower link pins where these are going to hook. So that's the point you're going to hook into. Now you have adjustments because a lot of times, let's say um, I put this weight box right where it's supposed to go and it's not the right dimensions. Your arms are too far in or they're too far out. Well, we're going to have adjustments with then what's called our stabilizer arms. So these silver rods here are called stabilizer arms and these are what's called a turnbuckle because to adjust this, you're going to turn this buckle and you see that arm moving in or you turn it the other way and that arm moves out to adjust your turn buckles now you have lock nuts on here so what you want to do is you always have an, want to have an adjustable wrench with your tractor so once you get to the right space you can put pressure on these lock them into that turn buckle and now you can't spin it and it locks it so it's not going to move but why you're going to adjust these is because you need to bring your lift arms out first so you can attach them to your implement because a lot of implements are this light. If we look at the other implement we're going to look at, that's heavy. I can't just shift that around by hand. So we need to adjust them out and then have them loose enough to where they're going to flat back in and hook into the implement and then you can tighten it up. You also want to make sure that once you hook up your implement that those turnbuckles are tight so the implement doesn't shift back and forth too much. You usually want a little bit of play, so a little bit of give in case you hit something with it, but you don't want it flopping back and forth, you know, six, 12, 18 inches. You wanna have maybe an inch or two of play on either side maximum, so there's that little bit of give, but not too much side shifting to it. Um, the other three pieces, one is gonna be very easy. Most tractors have a draw bar. This has nothing to do with hooking up your implement. This is just for towing things or hauling things or hooking a chain around or tying it down. So that draw bar is separate from your three point. And then you have your lift arms. This is your adjustable lift arm. Notice this one is solid, no adjustment to it. That is correct. On tractors always, the left hand one is solid, no adjustment, and you adjust your right hand one. So again, kind of like your stabilizer arms, you have a lock nut here. So I've loosened this lock nut and we spin this. If you look closely, this arm is going to raise or lower and that's gonna change the pitch of your implement. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick another option as far as your stabilizer arms go. If you look at this is a smaller series tractor, the other one had silver turnbuckle style. These are pull pins, so you can pull the pin and drop it in whatever hole locks it to be stable, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But this is what's called a telescoping stabilizer. Way easier to use in my opinion. If you have the option for these or wanna upgrade your tractor to these, I highly recommend it so much easier to use and adjust rather than those turnbuckles because once you get dirt and rust in those turnbuckles it's a pain in the ass to move around so this telescoping stabilizer arm is the way to go but this is a smaller tractor but it still has one adjustment arm and it still has one top link just like the other ones um so i'll show you guys here on it so let me start this tractor up real quick
So what you're going to see is because those arms are locked in, there is very little sway back and forth. If I didn't have those telescoping stabilizers locked in, this thing would be all forward back and forth. So you don't want to have that much play to it. This thing is pretty solid. Now, what we're going to show is the angle that's going to happen. I wonder if I can do it. So there's weight on that. Turn off the tractor. There's weight on this lift arm right now, which means I won't be able to adjust it. But if you can see, it's pretty level. So we're going to drop it back down. Watch your feet when you do that. Um, and now there's looseness to it. So let's say I loosen this all the way up. And now I'm putting pressure against it, even though it's loose. There we go. About an inch or so. We lift it back up. If you look at this now, you can pretty obviously see that because I loosened that, I extended that rod, it pushed this side down. This side is now, you know, top to bottom of my fingertip right there and on this side and I've got an extra two inches or so of difference so when you're doing a grading implement like this grading scraper a tiller a box blade a rear blade a flail mower a bush hog any implement needs to be level most of the time especially your cutters but if you're going to be working with dirt or gravel let's say you're crowning a driveway you're using this grading scraper to crown a driveway and you want that center piece to be higher in the center you would take the right hand side of your driveway like this where that side is lower and you would do it that way and then on the coming back it would be perfectly the same or you could adjust that link every time to change your level so if your implement is off pitch if it is not level on your implement one of the most important parts of your three point is that adjustment link right there and again, you want to change your stabilizers to make sure it is tight. Now, the other thing I want to show is let's say you want to change the pitch of your implement, like a plow or a box blade to put the back of the implement more towards the ground. That's what your top link is for. So right here, little hook, the whole hook it is handy. It's the same concept. You have a lock nut that locks it in and you spin your top link and you can see it's extending with the threads right there and it makes it longer because ideally you want the hole of your top link to usually line up with the holes on your bottom link when it's in the implement. So each implement has a little bit different of spacing where this could be forward or back. So you're going to have to adjust these to make sure it's leveled from side to side properly. So real quick, I'm going to show you guys how to hook up this uh, weight box. Um, a lot of times, like I said, you're not going to have the ability to throw it around by hand because you don't have a light implement. It's going to be that 800 pound implement right there, which is why it's nice to have two people, one to back up to the implement and kind of raise and lower your three point. You can do it by yourself. You just got to get on and off the tractor a couple times. So Chris, if you want to start it up, we're going to pretend this thing is heavy and I can't move it around. It's filled up. It's got 800 pounds of material in it. So go ahead and back up, Chris. Also nice to have two people so you can kind of push your arms out, keep on coming back. Right there's about good. Notice this arm is kind of lower than the other arm. I don't know if you can see that or not. And so that again is where your adjustment of your link is going to be handy. So if I can't raise this up, I could right now, but if I couldn't, you use this adjustment, I'm just spinning it and you can see it's raising it to line it up. And now, it should be at the right height. All right, so it's not sliding in. All right, how do I fix that, right? Because I can't push this thing any in. That's where we come around, and that's where we look at our stabilizer arms. If I were to spin it like this and loosen that stabilizer arm to give it more play, look at that. All of a sudden, you can actually push this arm in, and you can put your clinch pin in there. Then we come around to the other side, and we do the similar thing. Now notice this one's too high up because we're kind of on an angle here. We're not on level ground. All right. Well, then what we have to do is we either have our driver lower the three point or we make adjustments with our stabilizer arms. But that's going to mainly do that side. So Chris, lower your three point just a little bit. 
Got it lowered. Is that as low as it goes? Well, this implement's short. So at that point, you're going to have the fun of picking up your implement and doing it, or pushing it around or putting something underneath the implement when you pick it up. Um, again, you can do some adjustments here to loosen this up, and it's lowering it a little bit. So let me just keep tightening this for a minute. Low. Zoom in on this. It's maxed out at the moment, but it got a lot closer because I did this adjustment to it. Let me see here. Let me see if I can adjust a little bit more. This one's brand new, so it's got some of the paint sticking on it. Here we go. All right. See how while I adjust this, that arm is going down? Again, all because of this adjustment link to make it easier to hook up. So now I'm lined up. Chris, back up half of an inch. Good, good. Again, I can't slide it in, so I'm going to use my adjustment nuts, loosen this arm up, and now take your steel toe boot. And it'll slide on in. But see, that arm's tight again, so I might want to loosen it up a little bit more. There we go. Now I can put a linch pin in there to hold it. All right. And then what you want to do is you hook up your top link. Take your pin out. Take this out. Try not to kick your implement like I just did because that hurts. Notice this adjustment again. It's simple, easy adjustment. You shouldn't have to have tools other than maybe an adjustable wrench to loosen up those lock nuts. Also helps to have a screwdriver with you in case you need to use it to turn something. That'll slide through. You can tighten it back up to put some pressure on the system. Tighten down your lock nut so it doesn't come loose as you're using it. Now they will vibrate free over time, so you gotta check these occasionally. Because put your pin back in. All right, now Chris, raise up on the implement for me. One other real quick trick that we had is you do want to hook up your left arm first because this is the solid one and it's a little bit more difficult to hook up once the implement is attached hook up your left arm first get that lined up and put in and let's say now okay this right one won't line up because it's a little bit you know let's say all right it's down too low um it's much easier when there's no weight and you can adjust this one the other one's difficult when there's no weight on here to very simply spin this so hook up your left arm first then you can easily adjust this right arm into place and then you can slide it in. So simple trick. All right, Chris just raised it off the ground and I put linch pins in it so it's actually properly secured to the tractor. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that there aren't, there isn't too much extra play in it. So as you can see right now, it's just talking about it can slide all the way back and forth and you don't want that rattling, putting wear and tear on your three point as you're driving around. Now a little bit of play is good, but how do you solve this play? Again, we go back to our stabilizer arms. We're gonna tighten them up, which again is just spinning. So we're gonna make sure it's kind of lined up with the middle of the tractor, good, right there. Just kind of doing a visual on it so it's not one side. All right, that one's pretty tight. This one's still loose. You can see how it wobbles around there. And again, if you had that, uh, that telescoping pin, I wouldn't have to sit here and spin this by hand. I could just pull the pin and drop it back in. A lot easier. All right, and that's getting hard to turn, which means now I cannot move that. So you want that solid on the back. Now, if you have a bush hog um, or a flail mower or something like that, you might want a little bit of play to it, just a little bit of give like this. So if you hit something, it has a little bit of area to give. But with a box blade or a weight box or a rear blade, solid is better. And then put your lock and nuts back in. Um, and then you can see this is kind of angled. So let's say I have this thing filled with sand or water or something like that um, or it's something else that you're using an aerator that you want to go straight down all right how do you fix that angle again it's as simple as spinning your top link so you adjust with your top link it's going to rotate it backwards until you're level and this is just pushing out the threads on the top link and we can say all right now whatever's in there is going to stay in there a little bit better it's going to work a little bit better and as simple as that and again remember lock down your lock nut here Make it firm. This will vibrate loose over time, so keep that adjustable wrench on you, and there you're golden. So 
again, if you're looking at three-point hitches and you're trying to figure out how to use it and adjust it, this is the way to do it. Loosen everything up first, put on the implement, and tighten everything back down. Now, it's not going to be quite so easy as uh, that sounds. This was pretty easy today. These are new tractors. You're going to have to use your boot and kick it. You're going to have to fight with this sometimes, but that is the joy of owning a tractor. Um, so if you're having issues with them, hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, watch my other videos.